going back to this, we said that to find the y-intercept, um, we need to either put it in standard form or we need to uh, plug in 0 for n. But because anyway, we're going to need the standard form for the following question, we are going to put it in standard form first. So let's do this in 3, n minus 7. So I need to expand, right? And to expand, I write the n minus 7 twice, or you can use the perfect square formula. The foiling, so n squared minus 7n minus 7n plus 49. Then you're going to multiply the negative 0.3 in. What's negative 7 times negative 0.3? So we can collect like terms, so it's going to be 4.2n minus, that's going to be 3 point. Okay. Now since this is in standard form, right, I know that my y-intercept is negative 3.9. Okay. So the y or the p-intercept is means what? What does it mean that you have negative 3.9 products? Now the next part of the question is asking you uh, what are the zeros? Explain what they represent. Okay, to put it in factored form, what's the first thing I need to do? Yeah, common factor, right? So my common factor, if you look here, try dividing each term by negative 0.3 or by 0.3. You should be getting a whole number if you do that, yeah. okay? So um, if I factor out negative 0.3, I'm going to be left with n squared minus what? Yeah, 4.2, no? Yeah? Or no? Can I have a calculator? Yeah. Because 7 times 0.3 is 2.1, no? No, when I give you 4.2, I give you the final result. 
Yeah, you yeah, gave yeah. me the final result, but I was yeah, looking at the. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, maybe I No. And then, can you uh, divide 3.9 by 0 0.3? Yeah, 13. Plus 13. Plus 13. Okay, so I took my greatest common factor out. Then what do I have to do? The final two numbers. Yeah. That when you multiply, you have to have 13. Yeah. And when you add it, 14. Negative. So you're looking for the sum and product because it's a trinomial, so right? So that means I'm looking for um, that add to negative 14, and that multiplies to 13. What multiplies to 13? You don't have too many options. 1 and 13, right? Because we're, uh, we're adding to a negative number, so if you're looking at your green sheet, right? Because you're adding to a negative number, both of them have to be negative, right? Because your B is negative and your C My math, I learned in French, right? Okay. And I've never, I don't know most of the terminology. In, in, uh, yes, sorry? I will ask you after, after. Okay. It has a zero. So because I have both the factors, right? So I have P equals negative 0.3, N minus 13, N minus 1. Are we okay with this? Factored form, if I want to find the zeros, what are my zeros? So what you can do, you can set each bracket to equal to zero and solve for n, right? That's 1,000, right? Yeah. So I should set my profit to zero, right? Here, technically. Okay. So that means this is the zeros mean your profit is zero. Because remember, on the y axis, you have your profit. On the x axis, you have the number of chocolates. Right? So if you're looking for the number of chocolates when your profit is zero, these are your zeros. Okay. So you have to sell 1,000 chocolate bars for a profit of zero or 13,000 chocolate bar for a profit of zero, okay? when your profit is zero. What do we call that? When you're not making money, but you're not losing money. That means you're breaking even. Right? You're breaking even. Right? So you're not losing, you're not gaining, right? You're breaking even. The company... Shall I use the N2? No. Equal, no? If you have a, a letter have N? Letter N. Okay, so yes. So if you have, let's say, 0 0.3 N, N plus 2, then N is equal to 0, right? That's 1, 0. So you set this equal to 0, and then N equals negative 2. That's another. So you're going to have 0, 0, right? You're going to have 0, 0. Technically, 
we're talking about money most of the time when we're talking about break even we're talking about money right because otherwise like if we're talking about let's say a football or a, or a, a rocket or whatever it is when we are talking about when it hits the deck right that would be the word that we use for that okay because if you're looking at a ball and then you throw a ball and then it hit the ground right that in this case hit the ground right when does this hit the ground so each scenario has a different terminology. When you hit the ground, right? So if we're talking about ball, right? And then the ball, because the ground is your is your zero level, right? It's hard to use that every day, by the way. Is it? Because in this case, don't forget we have the equation already, right? Most of the time, there's people who are specialized to find the equation. That's, 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 yeah. that's, that's, that's the hard part. That's the hard part. Finding that equation is the hard part. Yeah. Right? Because, I mean, we're talking about perfect scenarios where we know that every single time it's happening. And she right? said it's hard to do it at the beginning. Yeah. It was talking. You know how things. You know, but in simple ways, not like yes. this. Yeah, you're not you're not solving a quadratic equation, but you're doing your math, yeah. right? Yeah, you're seeing more optimization all of these. Yeah, it's, it's funny when I was uh, standing in front of the shopper drug mart uh, seller, and uh, I want to make sure that I have 130,000 points because if I get 130,000, yeah. I can spend 200 dollars, and then I was at 110,000 or something like this, so I need 20,000. But then they had like this um, get 20 times a point. Um, so, and then for each dollar you spend, you get 15 points. So I was doing all this math and she's like, I'm like, how much do I need to spend to get the 20,000? She's like, I don't know, I can't do the math. I'm like, okay, tell me, how many dollars, how many points per dollar? She's like, 15 points per dollar. I'm like, okay, and it's 20 times, right? She's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I need to spend $33.33 dollars to me. <laughs> she was looking at me sideways. I'm like, yep, I'm optimizing here. She said that, okay, because she doesn't know what she's talking about. Yeah. So, uh, but I got my two hundred dollars off. I got two hundred dollars worth of stuff for free. That is amazing. So, this is what math helps, right? All right. So here are some key points that you're gonna have to look at, or keywords per se, that you have to look at, and then you have to understand when you're solving a problem. When we're talking about um, initial point, what am I? What do I mean by that? So that's zero zero if you're starting from the ground at time zero or at whatever zero, right? But is it always zero zero? No, no, no. It depends on the x-ray. So what do we call that point? Starting point, what else do we call it? In, term, in terms of like the key points that I know. So if I, so if I have this graph, I have this graph, where would my initial point be? What point would be my initial point? Which one? So we talked about the x-intercept, we talked about the y-intercept, and we talked about the vertex. Which one of these points would represent my initial point? And the x0? x0. x is 0, so what do we call that point? When x is 0, that's the y-intercept, right? So the y-intercept is always your initial point. This is where if you're talking about a rocket, or if you're talking about a ball, or if you're talking about whatever it is, when you're first releasing it, or when you're first starting, at time zero or at y zero or at, sorry, at x zero. So your initial point is your y-intercept. And what form do you want it to be in to find the initial point? Um, the standard. So you're looking at the standard form. Remember, guys, that you are now, you are um, looking at changing from one form to the other. Okay? 
break-even point or the distance when it hit the ground or the time at which the object hit the ground, what point am I looking at? So the y is zero, which is what? What point? The x. Yeah, say it, Cody. The x intercepts, right? So anytime I'm looking for the break even or the time when it hits the ground or the distance when it hits the ground, we're looking at the x intercept or my zeros, right? And what form do I want it to be in? What form do I find the x intercept? When I'm looking at the max, the min, profit, the maximum profit, the minimum profit, or the minimum distance, what am I looking at? The vertex. The vertex, right? If I'm looking at the actual maximum profit, I'm looking at the optimal value, okay? If I'm looking at the point, that's my vertex, okay? So for the maximum or minimum profit distance or height, I'm looking for my optimal value. So I'm looking at the y value of the vertex. And the point that the maximum happens is called the vertex, right? And of course, for the vertex, you, are, you need it in vertex four. Are we okay with this? So the path of a soccer ball can be modeled by the, react, by the relation h equals negative 0.1 d squared plus 0.5 d plus 0.6, where h is the ball's height and d is the horizontal distance from the kicker. So h is the ball's height and then d is the horizontal distance from the kicker. Both measured in meters. Find the zeros of the relation. So find when the ball hits the ground. This is how I would ask it. So if I'm going to ask this, I would say find when, or this would be my question, when will the, not when, where, I won't, let me, let me rephrase it this because we're talking about this. Uh, at what horizontal Distance will the ball hit the ground. Okay? So this is then you know that you're finding the zeros, right? Because anytime you're hitting the ground that means your height is zero, right? So you're looking at height and you're looking at horizontal distance, okay? We have a ball that's gonna go like this, right? It's starting at 0.6, correct? My initial height is yeah. 0.6. So what form do I have to put it in? Find the zeros, what do I need to, what form do I need to put it in? Factor. Factor. Okay, so what's the first thing I need to do to put it in factor form? Common factor. So that's negative 0 0.1. All right, x-intercept is zeros. Yes. So that's going to be d squared minus 5d minus Anyone doesn't know where I'm getting this from? Okay, 
trinomial, that means I'm looking for some m prime. Right? I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. So what multiplies to negative 6 and add to negative 5? Negative 6 and 1? No. Right? Uh, 2 and 3, because they're going to be, 1 is going to be negative, so it's going to be negative 3 and 2, that's going to give you negative 1. Okay? So negative 6 and 1 is the right number, is, are the right numbers, okay? Uh, because that's going to add up to negative 5. So that's going to be d minus 6, d plus So at what horizontal distance will the ball hit the ground? So we're going to make our height equal to 0, right? Because we are looking at when the height is 0. So if I take this, make it equal to 0, it's going to give me d equals 6. If I take this, make it equal to 0, it's going to give me d equals negative. So the horizontal distance from the kicker is 6 meters or a negative 1. Now, there is a problem a little bit here, right? Because it's one of the, there's sometimes we have to ignore some of our answers, okay? Because they don't make sense in the specific situation, okay? If the ball is, is here in the air and then the kicker is kicking it, right? I don't consider anything that comes before that. So this part right here, I can't consider because that's giving me negative one. Sometimes I have to, right? If I'm talking about a river, for example, and then there is a bridge on top of the river, I have to consider both sides because otherwise I can't have just a river floating in the air on one side and then it's getting into the ditch on the other side, right? I have to consider both scenarios. But in this case, right, my my negative distance, which is behind the kicker, I don't really care about because this is where the kicker kicked the ball. Okay? So in this case, I'm going to have to ignore this part and I'm going to say the ball will hit the ground six meter away from the So I think this answers this answers B. Okay? I think this answers B. Are we okay with this? Any questions? is the height above the ground, also in meters. What are the zeros and what do they represent? Again, I would probably be asking you when is the bridge or at what distance is the bridge hitting the ground, okay, or touching the ground. Um, so what are the zeros? We know that we have to put it in the, put it 
for the zeros, I have to put it in five. So I have to factor first, and my factor is going to be negative two. That's my um, greatest common factor. X squared minus two X minus three. So it's a trinomial. That means I have to do difference of, uh, sorry, sum and product. To do sum and product, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative three, add to negative two. So my only option is negative three and one. So that's x minus three, x plus one. So my two zeros are x equals three, x equals negative. one since it's a distance? No, because I need that part of the bridge. Otherwise, I'll be in the river. Okay? So, they represent the distance, so the zeros are the distance the bridge for meter, right? The bridge is four meter long. Yes? Yeah. Because it runs from here to here. <coughs> Are we good with that? In this case, you're looking at the length of the bridge, and the bridge is running from negative one to three, so that's a total of four. So here's what I want you to do, is I want you to look at the next question, try to solve it, talk to each other, and... Um, so you can say that the, the bridge is one meter to the left of the, <coughs> and then three meters to the right, so that's a total of Or I can use the same thing to mention the bridge. Which one? The zeros are the distance from the edge of the bridge. Yeah, yeah. So you are working on this. 